Whether you're struggling to figure out how to start decluttering when you feel overwhelmed, or if you've been decluttering for a while but are still feeling overwhelmed, then you're in the right place. To give you a peek into my world, I'm a bit of an overwhelmed personality type myself. So I know the difficulty of relaxing and quieting your frantic mind by still trying to regain control of the parts of your life that you feel you're losing control over. So don't for one second think that you're alone in how you feel, because you're not. See, clutter is a huge deal in most of our lives, and it could take a while to get on top of it, especially if you have no idea where to start. So before you lose motivation and give up hope, let's face those stressful and frantic feelings you have head on with these top tips to help you start decluttering, even if you feel overwhelmed by the whole idea. Number one is probably the best decluttering tip I've yet to talk about until now, and that is to start in the place that makes the most difference. See, decluttering isn't just physical, it's emotional and mental too. And I'm not saying this to overwhelm you more, so I hope I haven't lost you yet. But the reason I'm bringing this up is to show you that you have options in regards to where you start and how you start your decluttering journey, which is really important to take note of. Let me explain why. Being overwhelmed makes it very difficult to declutter because it's not helpful at all to figuring out where to start, what to do, and how to do it. Now, this almost always leads to something I call the frozen zone. Not to be confused with Frozone, the Disney Pixar character from The Incredibles, the Frozen Zone, where instead of doing something to move our decluttering journey forward, we do nothing because we fear making things worse and making ourselves feel more overwhelmed. So to avoid the Frozen Zone, I found it best to start decluttering in an area where you know you'll see results and feel the benefits of what you're doing relatively quickly. This will help you feel motivated and energized to carry on with decluttering despite your feelings of overwhelm. This might be your bedroom, your bathroom, the closet you hardly ever open, or it might be something on the mental and emotional side of things. So maybe you start with journaling so you can work through your thoughts and feelings before considering letting go of anything physical. Basically, whatever is making you the most unhappy and would make the most immediate difference in your life is where you should start. Number two is don't confuse decluttering with organizing. Organizing is a great way to make your home or space efficient, but trying to organize clutter will end up wasting both time and money. Because at that point, all you're really doing is placing a Band-Aid on a wound that really needs stitches. You're buying containers and closet organizers, buckets and baskets, all in an effort to make your clutter look pretty and presentable. But at the end of the day, it's still clutter. And it will remain clutter until you remove the Band-Aid, clean the wound, and stitch it up so nothing that is unwanted can get inside. See, when feeling overwhelmed, it's really easy to confuse decluttering with organizing. Because emotionally, all we want is to no longer feel overwhelmed. And the best way to no longer feel this way is to hide our clutter visually through the act of organizing. That's exactly what we do. But we soon realize that the overwhelm we were trying to eliminate through organizing is still there. It's just been restructured. And although we may not see clutter scattered across our home, we still feel it and deal with it daily. So if you feel overwhelmed because of your clutter, and if you no longer want to feel this way, then you have to take the time necessary to sort and declutter first. Organizing comes second. Number three is to focus yourself. Now, there are many different factors that can play into why you feel overwhelmed when decluttering. It could be because you don't know where to start and the clutter keeps piling up, so that's overwhelming. It could be maybe you feel emotionally attached to a lot of what you own. The thought of letting it go makes you feel like you'd be losing a piece of you, which is overwhelming. But for the vast majority, the feeling of overwhelm tends to stem from the simple fact that you're looking at all of the clutter in your life as one complete project, rather than a group of smaller, more emotionally manageable projects. See, regardless if you're new to decluttering or have been decluttering for a while but are still feeling overwhelmed, you can't afford to think about everything you want to declutter all at once. All that's going to do is overwhelm you more than you already are and stop you from making progress completely. So the best thing you can do for the sake of your sanity and decluttering success is to focus yourself and your efforts on one thing at a time. Think about it like this. Would you attempt to redecorate your entire house or apartment in one go? Probably not. You would start and finish one room at a time before moving on to the next. You would look at every room in your house as individual projects as opposed to the entire house as one big project. This is exactly how you should approach decluttering. Focus on one room, one category, or one emotion at a time before moving on to the next. Number four is to stop second guessing yourself. It can be really hard to not feel overwhelmed by the emotions that come with decluttering, especially when it comes to sentimental items. I mean, you know your situation better than anyone, so I have a question for you. When was the last time you were straight up second guessing your decision to declutter something? Comment below the item, the emotions you were facing or are facing, and how you overcame or plan to overcome it. I'm curious about your experience, but also maybe there's someone else in this community who is facing the same emotions. And this is an easy way to show them that they're not alone in how they feel. 
Now, over the last few years of my journey, I've found that the best way to stop second guessing yourself is learning how to make confident decisions. And for me, there are four ways to do this. Number one is to test them against your values. There are going to be many different times in life where we have to make decisions without any sort of framework and no way to judge between multiple choices. So when faced with a tricky or tough decision, it's often a good idea to look at your available options and ask which one of these most honors the things that mean the most to me. You see, the decision that's most in line with your core values would be the best decision for you. So in the context of decluttering, ask yourself, if I donate this item or keep this item, would that decision help me live out my core values or prevent me from fully embracing them? Now, I'm a huge proponent of knowing and embracing your core values. I keep mine at the forefront of my life. And if you're curious about what yours are or if you need a refresh, then there's a link in the description to download my free Clutter to Clarity Quick Guide, where I give you the six decisions you must make to start regaining control of your life and money, one of which is prioritizing your core values. Plus, there's a free worksheet to help you identify your core values if you don't know what they are. Number two is trust your gut. Look at what your intuition tells you is the right decision for you. Forget all of the what ifs and the overwhelming thoughts in your mind. Tune those things out and focus on what your gut is telling you. A great rule of thumb is if you're not at peace emotionally with your decision, regardless of what it may be, then it's probably not the right decision for you. Number three is have enough information. There is a huge difference between knowing enough to make a decision and knowing everything to make a decision. And this is a very common road that many people find themselves traveling down, regardless if they feel overwhelmed or not. I'm definitely one of those people who has gotten stuck in this trap quite a few times where I thought I needed to know everything in order to make a decision, but that's not necessarily true. You just need to know enough to help you make the best decision for you. And that word enough will fall somewhere different on the scale for each of us. So again, in the context of decluttering, how much information is enough information for you to make a confident decision regarding whether or not you should keep or donate something? Have you used it in the last six to 12 months? Do you plan to use it in the next six to 12 months? If someone offered you money, would you be willing to part with it? If you lost it, would you be actively searching for a replacement? These are just a few questions that help you gather enough information for you to make the right decision for you. And number four is to respect your doubts. We all naturally hesitate in the face of change. Some of us are more adept to shine away from it than others, and that's okay. But the important thing to remember here is that there is a fundamental difference between valid doubts and concerns about a particular course of action we might take and using doubt as an excuse to stay exactly where you are in life and avoid change altogether. So my encouragement to you as you stand face to face with change, decluttering, and minimalism is to respect your valid doubts and concerns, but doubt the doubts that are trying to keep you stuck living an unfulfilled life. All right, the fifth and final decluttering tip I have for you is to realize that this is a positive thing. Decluttering is often overthought and overcomplicated, which makes it really easy to feel overwhelmed in the process. So consider thinking about it like this. Decluttering is simply taking items that don't belong in a space and putting them in the space they belong. Sometimes that might be in your home and other times it means it's gone from your home. See, regardless of what I say, you're allowed to keep what you want. It's your decision. I'm not trying to deprive you of all of your stuff. What I am doing is challenging you to make a change and to let go so you can easily find and enjoy those things that matter most to you. I hope you found this conversation helpful to your decluttering journey. And if you did, share this with someone in your inner circle who you know will find value in it as well. Keep growing, keep learning, and always stay true to you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.